Welcome to another Take 5. Today's viewer request asks the question, Why don't we recite the Lord's Prayer more often in church? Let's take a look at that. In Matthew chapter 6, we find what most refer to as the Lord's Prayer. Jesus has been teaching his disciples about the arrogance and the pride of the Pharisees and how they should avoid that. And so he tells them, don't stand out on the street corners and draw attention to yourself um, in your prayers or in your reciting of scripture. Don't uh, give in such a way that everybody sees how much you give. And he goes on and says, but when you pray, you need to pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, we call that the Lord's Prayer, though I think more accurately that is the Disciples' Prayer. But let's take a look at this Disciples' Prayer. It is a great prayer. It is a wonderful model for us as disciples of Jesus Christ um, to keep in mind when we spend time with the Lord in prayer. It starts out with great worship and adoration of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And praise of God should be included in our prayers. It also seeks God's will. You know, in our prayer time, we ought to be saying to God, My will doesn't matter, Lord. It's what you want. Jesus demonstrated that in his prayer on the night that he was betrayed before he went to the cross. And so it praises God. It seeks God's will. It asks for physical blessings. Lord, give us today our daily bread. You know what we need today. And not even just our daily physical bread, but our spiritual bread, who is Jesus. But give us what we need for the day we ask that of you. It seeks forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord, when we fail, when we fall. A very important part of our prayer time. And it also includes a very important clause in there. Forgive us when we've sinned, just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. Again, Scripture is very clear that if you and I hold grudges, if we hold something against someone else and we refuse to forgive them, it really impacts God's forgiveness in our life. And so this prayer, this prayer seeks God's forgiveness, acknowledging the fact that we forgive those who have sinned against us. And then this phrase, lead us not into temptation. Now, God never leads us into temptation. And I think this phrase here is more of a request of God to protect us from temptation. Help us to resist the temptation that we face every day through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to keep our life and our heart pure in you. Deliver us from the evil one. Help protect us against our enemy. So we come back to the question, why don't we recite the Lord's Prayer more often in our worship services? Well, it's not because we don't believe in this disciple's prayer. Again, it is a wonderful prayer for us to be praying. And there are times when it will be very appropriate for us to, to recite this disciples prayer together just as there are times when it is very appropriate for us to make the good confession together but we don't include it as a regular or routine part of our worship because we do not want to fall into that trap that Jesus was warning the disciples about that the Pharisees were involved in reciting prayers just for the sake of the prayer. Falling into ritual. Because we know that rituals and routines, they hold no power. While there is great power in a genuine, heartfelt prayer. We do want our worship to come from the heart. We do want our worship to be somewhat spontaneous. We do want our prayers to be genuine. Oh, 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 oh,